All right. So um, what I'm going to show you guys, what we're going to work on, I'm actually going to teach this a little bit differently uh, than, I weigh than I have in the past. And the reason, Tyler, that I'm doing that is I just want to make sure that, Tyler, we are all set um, with our graphing skills before we get on to the solving. So the first thing is let's just look at an example of, let's say I wanted to show you guys how to graph x is less than or equal to 8. Now, hopefully you guys have had some, um, some history on graphing a, um, inequality as a solution. But just a reminder, what we're going to do when we do this is we're going to create a nice little number line. So we are going to be getting into solving inequalities, um, but I'll actually get into the algebraic process of solving inequalities later. Right now, I just want to practice graphing them correctly. So here I have x is less than or equal to 8. All right. So when you guys, when you have to create a number line, rather than always starting at 0, what I would recommend is starting at your solution, which would be at 8. Then we can choose numbers that are greater than, or numbers in the more positive direction to the right, and numbers smaller to the left. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys um, the longer method to how to do these, because there are going to be times when you guys are going to forget. There are going to be times where you're going to get confused. And you always want to have something you can fall back on for Tansy that you can go and complete these problems with. Okay. Um, so when you guys have the solution, you need to graph it. What I recommend is just putting an open circle at 8. All right? We will determine if that is a part of the solution or not. So to do that, yes, Nick? I thought Nick, Nick, I haven't finished yet. So to determine if that's closed or open, we are going to create some test points. And all I simply want you to do is just pick a point to the left, pick a point to the right, and obviously choose the number that is your solution. Then plug in those values in for x. So I have 6 less than or equal to 8, 8 less than or equal to 8, and 10 less than or equal to 8. All right? Again, this is the longer way, but guys, it is foolproof. All right? So now we're just going to determine, we're just going to play a true or false game. Is 6 less than or equal to 8? True. Is 8 less than or equal to 8? Yes. Is 10 less than or equal to 8? No. So since our solution point is true, Nick is correct. We're going to close the point. It's a part of the solution. Since the points to the left of my solution are true, that means all of them are going to be true. So we're going to shade to the left. Okay. Huh? 